everybody and thank you so much for coming to this session and joining myself and uh, officiant uh, John Blackwood. Hi um, everyone. And it gives me great pleasure to um, in, start the evening off with our subject for this evening, which is spiritualism, what it means and how do we explain it? And, um, and I feel that it's something that's um, a very um, subjective, you know, I feel that every one of us will have a different opinion, I'm hoping we do. And um, so it's over to you, but all I would like to just remind you, please, is, you know, be, be patient. If you've got something you want to say, just please wait until somebody else has said it, you know, and just treat everybody with courtesy as we always have done so far. But anyway, we're going to, I'm going to hand it over now. And uh, has anyone got anything they want to start off with? What does spiritualist, spiritualism mean and how do we explain it? Anyone got any views on that? That's Tim. Tim? Oh, good Kicking on you, Tim. Off. Thank you. You're still muted. All right, yeah, there we go. Still... It's fixed now. It... You should be able to unmute yourself now. Yeah. You Brilliant. Go. Thank you, Daniel. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this may seem a really simplistic view because it's but it's how I got, got I got into it. It's the seven principles do exactly what you just asked. They they explain spiritualism and they explain what spiritualism is, to me anyway. Um, if you work your way through the seven principles, that pretty much says it all, doesn't it? If you if you actually think about it. And of course, all of us will have one in particular. And me being me, it was the fifth one, which was personal responsibility, which for one seemed like a good idea. But I know that's very simplistic, but uh, I don't know what others feel about that. Hmm. Seems a good place to start, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Definitely. Yeah, got to start somewhere. Yeah. And I think certainly the concept of tonight was thinking about we've all had that experience where perhaps we've met somebody for the first time or somebody who knows us pretty well. and they turn around to you and they say, you're a spiritualist or what's this spiritualism all about? And it's it's probably the most awkward at moments when they actually ask you that question. Uh, but, you know, how do you respond? Have you really thought about how you respond? Or are there certain buzzwords or phrases we all could use or share with each other and say, well, you know what, this is what I tend to say and people understand that because obviously you have to do it in simple terms. So it's just to share your thoughts as to how you would answer or respond to that question from, as I say, a member of the public or, or even a friend asking you, what is spiritualism? Mm -hmm. So Karen's got her hand up. On you go, Karen. You have the challenge. It is a challenge. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi. I wrote... Um, I'll call it a poem, I don't think that, that's a right word, entitled Spiritualism. Um, when uh, I, I come from South Wales and um, in the UK, and the South Wales District Council ran a poetry competition or inspirational writing competition, I should say. And uh, so I wrote this for that, to enter that. I didn't win, <laughs> but I thought I'd like to share it with you because it was entitled Spiritualism. And I thought, well, my idea was, how do you explain spiritualism? That's why I just suddenly looked on my computer for it. I didn't have it here. So if I may, can I yeah, share? Please. Yeah. yeah, lovely. So it's entitled Spiritualism. S, speak the truth that death is nothing at all. P, place trust in yourself for you are spirit here and now. I, immerse yourself in the concept of a spiritual life. R, respect the power of love that is from God the Father. I, investigate the gifts of the spirit within you. T, think positively throughout the challenges of life. U, utilize the power within you to be of service to others. A, acknowledge the sensitivity of your own spirit. L, listen to the still small voice from within. I, 
Involve yourself in a full life, for life is for living. S. Slowly build on your understanding that life is eternal. M. Muster strength to live by that truth and share it. Wow. That's I really good. enjoy that. I thought it's really, really good. Really yeah, good. well done. Yeah, I like that a lot. I didn't win, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, but that's because well, we, we went there. We got that <laughs> wrong, didn't we? So I the think wrong we should person. have uh, you the won wrong the person contest tonight. So. Thank you. Oh, thank thanks. you for coming. No, no, thank you. No, thanks. You know, it's 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 odd, really, because with when uh, Tim was uh, talking and saying that the seven principles hold everything there is about spiritualism, I don't see the seven principles in the same way, and that's what evenings like tonight are all about is the fact that we don't all think the same and we should be thinking for ourselves as well you know otherwise we're just going to be clones you know and none of us want that but to me there is nothing within those principles that talks about the inspirers that we work with from the spirit world there's nothing to talk about the guidance we get from the spirit world you know yeah if you if you look at the fatherhood of God, you might be able to somehow come to that conclusion. But I'm I'm just saying that it, it, the seven principles to me don't spell out spiritualism. Of course, they're about what we stand for. But for me, spiritualism is more than those seven principles. That's what I believe. I believe there is just so much more. You know, for instance, when we talk about the fifth principle of personal responsibility, we talk about you know, being responsible for our words, being responsible for our actions and our thoughts and so on. But we never talk about the responsibility we have for our reactions. How we react is something we need to be responsible for as well. And there, so even though we have this outline and nobody, um, you know, respects the outline more than I do, I don't think anyway, but there, there still needs, I think, more to be said within those seven principles, you know, because those seven principles don't tell you to what to do when you're at rock bottom. And in today's society, we have a lot of people who are at rock bottom, you know, even more these last couple of years. But there, you know, but we, I'm not going to quote to somebody, you know, the fifth principle: you've got to be responsible for yourself when they're at rock bottom. I don't want to do that. So I, I want us to sort of think about, you know, what would you like, to, if there's anything you'd like to add, anything you'd like to take away. I want to hear from you. OK, over to you. And I think that's right, Simone. You know, obviously, the spiritualism is based in the philosophy of the spirit, seven principles. But if, if we were having a conversation in the street or the bus stop with someone and they ask you, well, you're a spiritualist, what's that all about? Yeah. Uh, then you're not going to say, well, it's the seven principles, because the next question naturally will be, well, what's that? Never heard of that before. Are you going to recite the seven principles? And then that'll just turn them off completely. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's an important part of the bedrock of our philosophy. Mm -hmm. But I think you're quite right. It's much more than that. And you want to say something that's going to, just in a couple of minutes or a minute, yeah. actually, they're going to inspire them to think and think, well, okay, maybe you're not daft people. Uh, yeah. Because the first thing they're all going to think about is you talk to dead people. That's yeah. what you do. Because yeah. that's what they think. Yeah. And actually, that's not how I see spiritualism. Mm. That's not my spiritualism. Mm. So I have a responsibility to get a message across, whatever that message is, that doesn't support that. Obviously, we believe that that's the case, but you know, spiritualism is much more. It's a, something that's part of me. It's changed my life. And hopefully that would inspire somebody else to think, well, oh, I'm going to find out a little bit more about that. And that's what we need to think about tonight, I think. So I've got Carolyn with her hand up. She's okay, going to inspire yes. us all. So <laughs> on you go, Carolyn. <laughs> I love number three. I mean, to me, that's the essence. The communion of spirits and the ministry of angels. For me, that is the principle number for me in the seven principles um because that's how i came into this movement you know spirit approached me and suddenly i thought i was going nuts because i was hearing voices in my head and yada yada um hard one i don't know i'm very reticent about talking about spiritualism and i know i should be a better ambassador 
but I, um, yeah, I, I don't, I, re I don't like being laughed at, and I'm always fearful that someone's going to say, oh, you know, you speak to dead people. Uh, but for me, I agree. It's brought on my contentment. It's given me an inner peace. Um, I love the healing part of it, which I think people do not laugh at. Um, but there needs yeah. to be better education about, you know, yes, we do talk to dead people, essentially. We're talking to their spirit. Um, but it's, um, it's the empowering messages that come through. It's the inspiration that comes through. It's the guidance that comes through that I love. Um, and that to me is, is what spiritualism is about, is, is knowing that we are spirit in human form, recognizing that and then learning by it so that we have an easier time, I believe, um, in life. Um, so the fact that we are spirit in human form and that we can get guidance if we give it time um, for me is very reassuring and and uh, and helps me for when it comes my time to go back to heaven or wherever okay. we go. Um, I will be reassured that I will meet my loved ones and um, and that it's not just a um, conceptual idea, but it's a reality having been proven by the spoken word. Yeah, yeah. but I think you were saying some things there, Carolyn, I think that I think would touch most people's consciousness if you were talking to them you were saying it empowered you to take control of your life and make better choices within your life you know these are the sort of things people want to hear that would inspire somebody else to think that actually here's a religion or a way of life however you want to describe it that's actually made you a better person because that's really what you're saying mm -hmm. Carla. so if you can think about words that that kind of send that message out to people so they, they really want to go then and think, well, I'm going to find out a little bit more about it. Or maybe Carolyn isn't as daft as I thought she was or as crazy talking to dead people. Uh, and even you could be saying, you know, I, I believe that, you know, God is, is in my perception as I see it. Uh, and that might differ to you, but then that's OK. Mm -hmm. So spiritualism isn't a religion that tells you this is what you think. And the good thing, I think a great thing about it is you could get, the dozen of us or so that are online here today, you could ask us all that question, what is spiritualism? And we'll all come up with a different answer. Yeah. That's actually a good thing. I don't think it should be dramatically different, but there should be that basis within it, which of course is founded in the seven principles. But if you're able to think there's one principle, just as you said there, Carolyn, there's one that sticks out to you and think, okay, well, how could you use that to describe what you believe spiritualism is. And I, th I think you would be a long way there to, to achieving the goal we're talking about tonight. June. Good evening. Hi, Hi I, do. I am grateful that those persons I know who did not behave well are not condemned to everlasting torments of hell fire because no one deserves that. No. Yeah. I am grateful, and I will echo what Tim has said, that we have a principle that says eternal progression open to every human soul. And I would like to know that my family have the opportunity to improve themselves and that when I pass over and meet them, they are not the people they were, and they have the opportunity to improve and understand their own life. Mm. And that's what got me into spiritualism, that mm. somebody has the opportunity to change. That yeah. I don't have to condone bad behavior in myself or anyone else, and I don't have to say that they are condemned to hellfire because that's what I was brought up to believe. And can I just, that, yeah. sorry, June, can I just come in on that? Because I think you've said something that's incredibly important to me. Um, because um, one of the things I like to do in my work as a, a demonstrator is uh, um, I, sometimes I'll bring somebody through who when they were here on, in our world, they were not particularly very nice. 
Mm. And and there is a reason why I know now, and it's taken me a little while, but I know now why this happens to me. I get people that, and they tell me what they were like when they were here and how unpleasant they were and so on. And, um, and then I then talk about how they are now, mm. if that makes sense. So it shows how they were and then how they appear to me now and how they've changed for the better. And, there's, and the spirit world has shown me the healing involved in that. And the, that individual that's receiving that message may possibly have a reluctance to go to the spirit world in case they meet them. That's right. And what we're doing is we're taking away the fear of having to meet that individual when our time is up here. And that helps that individual to be healed and to relax and so on and, and not have to worry about that for the rest of their lives. And that's something the spirit world taught me a long time ago. And that's something that I see as being quite, um, you know, not, not often discussed. That's why I'm talking about it. No, it isn't. There are very few mediums who will offer that character from the spirit life mm. everyone believes it's love and light and they come only in love yeah and that is not true mm. that's why i don't get many messages <laughs> because mediums are not capable of delivering that content mm. and but i think yeah but i think that the, the point I, I i feel is that we we've, we've got to get across is that the eternal progress that's open to every human soul is only if they want it. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it was important to me yeah. to know that when I came into spiritualism and began to understand what the code of living was, that that was there. Mm. Thank goodness. Yeah. And I think that's a good, that's a good selling point because ultimately yeah. that's what we're looking at. How can we best sell spiritualism? And what you're seeing is when you come into it, your learning understanding of spiritualism was that you are never condemned to damnation in hell. That's uh, right. That, that concept, we don't believe in the concept of, of heaven and hell. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just alien to, to us all as spiritualists. So we all make our own heaven and hell, whatever that is here in this world. Mm -hmm. Likewise, in the, the hereafter, but we've got an opportunity to change. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's quite powerful. That's quite powerful. Because mm. let's pay, face it, there's lots of people in this world who are quite downtrodden. They, mm. They're believed mm. to, in themselves, they believe themselves to be bad. They're not good people because somebody's told them that. Mm. And, and actually, here we have a religion that can say, do you know what? You can be whatever you want to be. The choice is yours. Mm. Mm. And that, that's it's back to being empowering and and as Simone says, you know, it's taken away the fear as well, yeah. too. You know, so many of us have a fear of life, let alone death. Yeah. And I remember, I think That's it was correct. a very first session we, we, we did, a uh, philosophy group we did, and somebody had said to them, spiritualism is really about getting rid of the fear of what's to come. Yeah. And that's both in this world and ne yeah. the next world. And I think that's an important message to get across, too. So, yeah. yeah. And I can support Tim in saying that the next one was personal responsibility. The mm. fact that I can change. Yeah. That mm. means they can as well. Mm. Yeah. That's and I, I was I was interested in um in Caroline Caroline's definition when you were talking to Carolyn about um you know how you didn't want to you know you didn't want people to laugh at you which is quite you know quite understandable and how you know you we, we're all very cautious when someone says you know um oh what do you do then and who are you you know and anyone who knows those I'm certainly not ashamed of my religion or, or any of anything that I do within my religion um but I have to say that for a long time, um, people used to say to me, you know, um, what is it you do? And I'd say something like metaphysics, because generally most people didn't know what that meant. So they didn't like to follow it up with what does that what does that mean? Because they don't like to look stupid. Um, but the reason I, I was I've been like that for so many years is because when I tell them 
you know, I'm a spiritualist, very often they say the very first question, and this applies across the board, whether it's the medical profession, whether it's the legal profession, whether it's your local hairdresser, as soon as you say that, they say, who do you see with me then? Which puts me off, right? Because I'm often the one that says absolutely no one, to be honest, you know, and not because there isn't anyone there, it's because I'm not actually looking for anyone, you know, so... But that's the point. And so, you know, there's that awful feeling of, oh, here we go again, you know. And also one of the issues I have as well is when you say, you know, in, in everyday conversation to maybe your neighbours or local community, you're a spiritualist. It seems like that becomes the topic for the night. And yeah. that drives me nuts because I don't want it to be different. I want it to be part of the community. I don't want it to to take pride of place all the time we've got to you know I want to get past that so that's when it becomes hard for me sometimes you know I don't want to I don't want to open up the floodgates to all, all the criticism and everything else because nobody's going to change my mind I'm going to change my mind my, my mind about my religion but nobody else is going to do that to me yeah. so what about everybody else you know what do you think we'll get Diana Oh, hand? sorry, I didn't see your hand. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's okay. Do you hear me? I have a yeah. question. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, hello, everybody. Um, I'm so very shocked to hear this because um, I'm from the Netherlands and I think I'm the only one here. And um, to get the spiritualism across in the Netherlands, we're starting at a very low point because there's a, a whole uh, another perspective of uh, what spirit spiritualism is about in the Netherlands and I'm listening to you and it's almost shocking to me that the same um, uh, uh, issues issues yeah. yes yeah. thank you the same issues occur in in UK uh, mm -hmm. where it is a, a, a religion where uh, so many churches are there so I, I was thinking to myself, how can I participate in this in this conversation because I'm in the Netherlands? But it, no, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah. Well, it's exactly, yes. Yeah. And so, you, you know, uh, you could you could go to America. Spiritualism is much more established in yeah. America than it is in the UK. Uh, but again, you would have the same questions there. But, and to be honest, I think the reason why all of that is, whether you're in the Netherlands or the UK or Australia, I don't think it makes a difference. It's a case of we are to blame for this because as to how we have presented ourselves and the image we create. And, and it's, it's, it's all down to us. And that's why I think tonight it's important for us to look at that and think, OK, let's seriously almost write down, think about, OK, if somebody yeah. was to ask me that question, how would I honestly answer but answer in a way that's going to make them think and not make them think that I'm a complete and utter nutcase. And, and I think from what we've been hearing so far, there's very easy ways to do that. Yeah. Uh, and actually, more importantly for me, it's about inspiring other people to think, well, maybe I'll look into that or I'll, I'll give it some thought or I certainly won't dismiss it the way I have in the past. And my experience from people who, who know me like passionately, uh, but, you know, I've been a spiritualist a long time, so it's certainly it's not an issue within my family because they're involved. Uh, but, you know, it's if, if people have known me for a while, so see, especially professionally, I've come across this. And then at some point they've got around to religion, that conversation changes. And then somebody might say, or they say, you know, what religion are you? And I'm always very honest and say I'm a spiritualist. And they are taken aback to sit back and thought oh really but then you could see in their mind they're almost going but I think you're okay <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> it seems that weird to me have I really got you wrong so you can see them think and then the, the mind's ticking away and they're going so what does that mean then what do you actually believe and then when I try and explain it in my way in my words then I can see them thinking oh that's interesting I never knew that now they might not be interested in looking into any further that's fine but at least they don't have a negative experience from what I've said. And I think that's that's why we need to craft our words very, very carefully and think about it and, and allow it to come from the heart. And everybody in life, regardless of whether religious or not, is looking for inspiration from each other. 
they're looking for something that's going to help them in their life. And whether it's students saying, you know what, you're not going to be condemned to damnation. They may have been brought up to think that, and June was. Yeah. And they're just looking for something to say, do you know, actually, maybe that's not the way. I thought, oh, I just thought all religions thought that way. Because some people do think that's, that's religions for you. They put you in the box. Or religions dictate to you what you think. So I always say, you know, the good thing about spiritualism is it allows you to think for yourself. In fact, if you can't, you can't really explore spiritualism. Mm. So these are, to me, inspiring things that people want to hear. So, so yeah, your experience is no different and actually will not change no. uh, because <laughs> as, as long as we're a minority religion where few people really understand us and there's little knowledge about us out there, uh, then I'm afraid that's the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Can I please uh, uh, ask your thoughts ab ab about something? Uh, how can I? Yeah. Of course. Okay. Of course. okay. Yeah. Where? Okay. You know, in the in the in, it's the same issue. So in uh, I can I can't really go with the uh, with the uh, um, the 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 principles in that order yeah, to give them. Okay, these are the principles. I have to look beyond the principles to get it across to people. Right. And we're now, yeah, and we're now aiming for how can you how can you get fulfillment in your heart? Then not not in money or something, but how can you fulfillment in your heart? How can you get more out authenticity? And how can you get it across in your community? That's our aim now. Do you think that's a good start to begin with mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Because, yeah, because exactly. spiritualism, in my opinion, is, is the counterbalance to materialism. I was just so, going to yeah. say that. I yeah. often nicked yeah. someone's my... words because yeah. she was getting in there before I nicked it. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, but it's very true. And again, people relate to that. They know what materialism is. Yeah. yeah. So I think an easy thing to say to people, well, you know materialism and all that entails with that spiritualism's the complete opposite, the opposite. To that. Mm. and people might think you know what I, I hate the idea of being materialistic and and it's quite interesting society is going that way that's the kind of norm within society mm -hmm. now yeah. maybe it wasn't 20 30 years ago yeah. and we're all materialistic to a certain extent yeah. but I think people are inspired to think oh actually there is an alternative to materialism mm. I like that thought so yeah hey, thank you I yeah, think you're on something there. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're going to make you all ambassadors for spiritualism by the end of this evening. We're <laughs> going to have the magic words there. You know, Vera and Tony are going to jump out that bed and they're going to be able to <laughs> run down the street and spread the words by the end of tonight. So. <laughs> they're up for it, you can tell. So that's it. <laughs> I mean, I, I know, I, for instance, you know, my, my, my son and my daughter, they have their own children and um, they do, you know, they, they've got very successful careers. Um, and my son especially, um, and my children have always known what I do. They've always known, I'm, you know, all, all their lives I've been a spiritualist, all their lives I've been, um, I've been working with mediumship and so on and philosophy. But my son, even today, I mean, he doesn't live near me, but if he was to walk in the door today, the first thing he'd say to me is, hello, mum, how's the dead world? And I always say, busy, thank you. And that's the end of our conversation about what I do. You know, yeah, yeah. just not interested. You know, that's as far as they want to know. And maybe that's the case that only certain, uh, only a certain point in one's life Maybe, you know, maybe we're fortunate that nothing too bad has happened to them in their lives that have made them want to turn to something else. I don't know. But I think that for most of us who find spiritualism, it's because we're at that point in our lives where we had that transformation, where there's been that awakening that we talked about in that last month. That I feel that that's something. It's just that, that need, isn't it? And thankfully, yeah, they've not need. felt that yeah. need, and that's yeah. absolutely fine. But maybe one day they will, at least to know where to go, or how to investigate it if they want. Because, you know, they've they've had an awareness of it through you. Yeah, so. yeah, but uh, but they're really not interested in it at all. They never ask a yeah, thing, and that's fine. That's fine. Oh, but you're right not there. denying it either, and that's the important no. thing. So they think, know it. Yeah. And, you know, if they need to ask about it, 
that can come to you. I think but... it's because possibly because I'm such uh, I'm so reluctant to indoctrinate my children mm -hmm. because I was very very fortunate because my mum and my dad were different religions and we didn't have my sister and I didn't have any religious indoctrination at all we weren't even allowed to go to Sunday school you know when we were kids and because of that um, the, my parents always said you must find your own religion so I immediately became an atheist until I found spiritualism but that's mm -hmm that's another story no yeah. but that's the point so I don't want to go I don't want to go back on what my what my parents did because I feel what they did for me was exactly right you know yeah exactly. so why should I indoctrinate someone else just because it's spiritualism makes me no no better than any of the other religions then so so um so when you, when we're looking at the seven principles we just talked about those briefly um have you noticed how Th th those that we like at the beginning, maybe we, you know the certain um, principle we we like at the beginning. As we move further on in our understanding and our unfoldment, how those principles, the importance of those principles, or the priority of those principles changes. That's how I found it, anyway. You know, and I, I'm now I've got a couple that I would find difficult to choose between. Yeah, you know, yeah that's what true. everybody else finds it. You know. So have you have you got? But do, do you know there's a thought I often have because we often debate, and I know tonight's not about the seven principles per se, but you know we often debate to change them because they are gender specific. Yeah. Uh, they're written in a Victorian language for that era, era, quite understandably, so that the people of that day could understand what the hell spiritualism was about. But we've moved on. We're couple of hundred years on from that now. So uh, should we then look at them again? And I actually think in the future, what we might happen for spiritualism is we will move beyond the principles. They'll still be there as the bedrock. They're still part of our history, our foundation, but spiritualism will morph into something else. And I think the sort of things we're talking about tonight will become the norm as to how we would describe spiritualism and how we'll be able to to emulate that effectively and promote it, which we're not doing at the moment. If you think about the Christian church with the Ten Commandments, you know, they've moved beyond that. So maybe one day we'll move beyond our own principles to, to enhance it. I'm not saying ignore them, they will still be there, but there'll be a new philosophy that will evolve from that. Just as you're saying, Simone, that, you know, that even an understanding of the seven principles has changed for Absolutely. you yeah. in your life. I'm sure it has for us yeah. all. So maybe for us collectively as a movement, we're going to move, move beyond mm -hmm. that. I don't know, just a thought. Yeah. Just a thought. Daniel? I just want to come in on, on uh, that part of what John was speaking about, how moving beyond the principles. And you know, we see, well, I've seen it quite often now, a lot of certain places that say, um, based on, the seven principles of spiritualism and i've seen them adapted and in my opinion some uh, have done a great job in progressing the idea yet in my opinion there are others i have seen that i feel are missing the point entirely in order to make it what seems more more digestible for their audience mm -hmm. and I feel that if we're going to, which we will need to continually progress in how we are not only demonstrating ourselves as the living, but also in how we communicate with those um, on the other side, really the, the, to really grasp the philosophy. And I find that there are not many who desire to engage in the philosophy. And I think also not only in how we discuss not only in how we discuss the religion or the science or the thinking, the philosophies about spiritualism, we have to also be aware of how we're doing that process because it's, e it's easy for many people to say, I don't want anything to do with the philosophy, it's confusing, or it's only people arguing. Because oh. we, 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 we know yeah. that from, I, came, I come from a different religion, and all I know is that that religion is based in war and colonizing and destruction for a lot of part of it. 
and when you question that religion, there's a lot of um, retribution that comes that way, where here we find a much a different place. And again, I was taught this by my father who was in hospital at the time, when I stepped into this idea that, and again, it was an idea, I have become a spokesperson for spiritualism. <laughs> and I feel that's a very personal responsibility we must mm -hmm. really gauge. But I went to father when he was in hospital and he was um, preparing to die. And not a man of, 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 well, a man of faith in his own way. And I felt that what I had experienced was vital that I share it with him and gift it to him. Yet my words were, because I wanted to keep it simple, I said to him, do not worry about where you are going because you'll be able to walk through all this again and maybe do it differently. And mm -hmm. his response was, are you kidding me? I don't wanna do this all over again. I just want to be free. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I realized how there's that, even though I had the best of intention, it's not up to me to decide if you or you or you get to or want to or desire to do any of this the way that I do it. And it really reminds me of how, in a sense, individualistic our whole process is when we mm -hmm. discover more. And as what was brought, about, brought up before, this is a thinking person's religion. We mm -hmm. must be able to think and analyze. This isn't about simply accepting because of pressure or the majority goes. It's really mm -hmm. about the self-discovery within. I just wanted to share that aspect as yeah. it sparked for me. But you know, D Daniel, with that, there is a counterbalance to that as well, too, because you know, we we could all describe ourselves as free thinkers and you know, discussion is good and let's let's have the heated debate and you yes. know, we all can get quite enthused by that and learn from that. And I think that's a good thing. There's other people out there in the world who need some sort of structure, yeah, who need a belief yeah. system that gives them comfort and security. Uh, and you know, we had a, it's a find interest in the last few days with had a horrible situation in the UK where we had a member of our UK parliament who was murdered and and he was a person of faith. And there's been a lot talked about in the news about his faith and what he was like as a person. And there's a big thing, and again, you can share in that or not as you wish. Uh, but there was a big thing made. Uh, certainly in some news reports that, that I heard that he was a Catholic and he didn't have the opportunity. His family were upset because there was no opportunity for him to have the last rites. Mm -hmm. Now, for that family and for him as an individual, that was important. Now, that's a ritual that I can't relate to, but he could. And see, for some people uh, of certain faiths, that's important. And we don't have that in spiritualism at all. So for them to brace embrace an open philosophy like ours, I can see is really very difficult for a lot of people, especially in their final hours. You described your dad, Daniel, as preparing to pass. And do you know what? I don't think we talk enough about that in spiritualism, mm -hmm. actually. No, you're right. Take and, that. you know, how could, what's spiritualist response, spiritualism's response to that? Because if any religion should have, should have comfort and solace to those in their dying hours, it's spiritualism. But you know what? I, I just, I don't hear of that within our movement. So maybe there's a position we could be taking in helping people. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, just another mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. Thank you. June. In my church, these seven principles are painted upon a wooden board, but the last one has a spelling mistake. Oh, and the word oh. human is omitted. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. So according to John's principle, what may the soul morph into? If we are to progress, how do we progress beyond the human soul? How, you, how did you describe it? as a becoming advanced beyond where we are now, if spiritualism is to change? You mean if we get rid of the human aspect of it? Uh, no, no, I didn't say that. No, that's not what I meant. The spelling mistake 
omits human, yeah. leaves the soul. So, yeah, so eternal we, progress of the soul, you mean? Yes. So. so if you consider that spiritualism must change, how are we going to morph beyond being a human soul if spiritualism is to change and advance? I'm just curious as what you see so, advancement to be. Well, you see, I have no issue with that. Even, and I know you're not talking about this per se, but take out the word human. You know, I see evolution as of the soul, as of God. That's right. So what are we going to morph into? What You said morph, that is to change. The soul is to change. I'm thinking more the philosophy changing and morphing, you know, so therefore it would be described in a different way. But I don't yes, see but it the human... It can't be described in a different way if the human soul still describes it. Because you haven't got the experience. Yeah, but you, you could be saying the same about the fatherhood of God, which is the first principle. You know, I don't I don't believe in the concept of God being a man, for instance, or a woman for that. It doesn't matter. matter. No, but it does. To some people it does. And they identify with those words. And I think we could at some point put the principles almost in the box and say that they are actually the founding principles of our organization. They, they were set by those, our founding fathers, our pioneers, but how do they relate to modern day life? And I think how they relate to modern day life is now is different to what it was, to be honest, even 20, 30 years ago. So it'll be interesting, what the point I'm making is, it'll be interesting to see how that morphs on in the future. And will we still refer back to those seven principles the way we do today? Mm. I don't know we will. That, that's the point I'm making. Mm. So Can our I philosophy just... will, will move yeah. beyond the principles to be related more to empowerment, to giving people confidence, uh, taking away fear. Now, they're everyday thoughts and actions that we can relate to, but they're not mentioned in the principles at all. Can I just quickly say something because uh, to do with the principles, because when I first came into this movement, um, at, at, at the bottom of the seven principles, you would always find the words subject to personal interpretation, but, they've gone, but they've gone now. It is not subject to personal interpretation anymore. We're told what they mean. So I'm going to just leave that with you. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Carolyn. Um, yes, um, Daniel, thank you for sharing that about your dad. I, I, I've met a couple of people who have said, oh, gosh, I don't want to come back. You know, mm -hmm. I just I'm, I'm done. Um, I don't want to have to deal with the hard work of being being here. Um, I, as a nurse, I saw the last rites being given to somebody and I just found the hypocrisy. And I apologize to anybody here who's Catholic. But the idea that somebody can come in, put a cross with some holy oil on your forehead and say all your sins are forgiven, to me is a load of hogwash because we as souls, I believe, have to account for our actions when we get to heaven and we are our own judges, if you like. And I just feel this hypocrisy that people, they can do whatever they want. They, and then it's okay, as long as they get the last rites before they go, they'll be saved. And I, I don't know what- Carolyn, hmm. Carolyn, isn't that right for them? It's right for them, but but for me, it 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 didn't ring true. It's no, like- how it doesn't, can, yeah. doesn't how, either. How, but... can that, how can that be? And I, and I think also, yes, it's nice if the spiritualists had some sort of ceremony as they were passing over that, but do we actually need it? Because we have a reassurance that, that, that things will be okay, that we will meet lo our loved ones. Carolyn, I wasn't we talking about ceremony. I don't believe in this, the ceremonies of any kind. I wasn't thinking of a ceremony. Yeah. It was more our philosophy should deal with that process more and how we can be of comfort to those mm -hmm. more so in the in the dying hours. How, even through our ministry, you know, it's Simone and I, to be mm -hmm. fair, we don't talk about that within the ministry. I think we should do yeah. more. How do we comfort those people at that stage? And I don't mean be, by being ritualistic. While some might like it, that's not what I'm talking it's about. It's me. more it's not spiritualism has so much to offer people at different stages mm -hmm. in their life, yeah. at crisis stages in their life. 
and whether we like it or not, death is age in our life. So what is our response? How do we deal with that? Uh, if I think we give the person reassurance that it's okay to pass over, because yeah. oftentimes there's so many anchors holding them back, which usually is family, um, that, that I think encouraging them that it's okay um, to go and meet their loved ones that are already and give them a reassurance. And that's just an idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you, you know, my, the closest person to me who's passed in recent years is my, my grandmother. And she was really like a mother to me. And, uh, and she was passing and we were all with her at that time. And she was very much involved in spiritualism, had that background and she had everything prepared, everything organized. She literally was just waiting to take a last breath. But we spent those final hours just laughing mm. and spending time together and recanting all the times, oh, remember when this happened or, you know, the highlights in your life. And I remember asking, and I said, well, Gran, I said, you know, you're going to be passing on. And I, wasn't, I was determined not to go to, oh, well, how are you going to demonstrate things beyond your path? I'm not interested. I don't care, actually. <laughs> Uh, I just want her her life the way she wants to live it. Come back as a message, actually. Comforting to me as that might well be. This was about her. Uh, and I, I was getting her to think about, well, who would you really like to meet when you pass? You know, she'd lost both her husband and she was very close with her mother. And so we spoke about that. And she said, well, I really don't know which one I would want, actually, to be perfectly honest. And, you know, we had a good laugh and a joke about that. And to be honest, that, that was a healing experience for her to prepare for that passing. But it was for me and the rest of the family, you know, uh, you know, we, we were thinking of hymns we would sing. And anybody who knows me, I cannot sing at all. Yeah, uh, I can but, vouch for that. Exactly. Can, but both, yeah. <laughs> to be fair, both my mother and my aunt, her sister, they are good singers. Uh, so at one point, actually, we were sitting with the SNU hymn book, singing the hymns to my gran, and she just shouted. <laughs> I've never wanted to die so much in my life. <laughs> Make it now. But these are the fun times we can yeah. have. And that, to me, I thought, you know what? That's, she thankfully wasn't in pain. I know it's very difficult if people are in pain. She was perfectly with it too. But, you know, we were able to use our philosophy of spiritualism and understanding of it to help her as it helped us. And maybe we need to focus on that a little bit more and talk about that. Mm. Okay, anybody else like to share an opinion? How would you describe spiritualism? That's what we're talking about. So yeah. Is there anything, Tim. even just magic words, so just one word, Tim, there we go. <laughs> I, I've been listening carefully, and I was thinking, you know, over 100 years ago, two years ago, a lady called Emma Hardy, was probably asking the same question and came up with what she came up with, which was five. Question, wasn't it? She was asking the same question. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. It. And it's come, it's many, many times that's come up over the 172 years, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's only natural because, you know, spiritualists by their nature are anarchists. Yeah. We all rebel against the norm. <laughs> you wouldn't be a spiritualist if you didn't have that spirit within you. That's we so don't like true. organization. We don't like to be told what to do or be constrained in thinking. And here we are part of a religious movement uh, that has an organization and has a hierarchy, as every organization yeah. has. So naturally, we'll rebel against that. Mm. And if anybody, even the seven principles, do dictate to us what we believe, whether we like it or not, we've got seven points, which technically we do all agree on. Uh, and that in itself should jar with us. But do you know what? At the same time, I think you're right, Tim, Emma Hardinge Britain must, must have thought, what do we actually believe? <laughs> what is this organisation about? And that's, that became the basis of what we know to be the seven principles. And as I said, I wouldn't like to throw them out at all because actually they say a lot about where we've come from and who essentially we are as an organization but they don't tell me anything about where we're going 
And the sad thing is, you know, in my own church, like every church, like uh, June was mentioning there, you know, they're above the platform. You sit there you, when the, the medium's boring you, unless, of course, it's Simone, because she's just... <laughs> So uh, you read so, them backwards then because you, you, you get your focus so, and you, you notice the spelling mistakes yes, and everything like that you know and so you're going through them and you know I've heard people leave a service and say do you know I really enjoyed that but you know I was looking at those principles and do you know what I don't really see whether it's brotherhood or fatherhood they get caught up in the words mm. because it's a language that they don't relate to and, and, I, and I think, and I try and explain as well, it's what that means to you, and that's not how I see it. But do you know what? That's not what's on the wall. That's not what that actually says. That word is there. And actually, that's a barrier for some people. And I think we need to try and, and, and to be honest, this is for the younger generation, not even for us. Mm -hmm. We are old people here, believe it or not, we are looking around everybody. Uh, that. It's just the young people just do not relate to that. They they use a gender neutral language. Uh, these they, they think that that's an old style. And do you know what? That's not me. And that's not modern life. So therefore, I'm not interested. So I think we need to think about positioning spiritualism for the future and how we describe it without necessarily changing the principles. I think we just move beyond them as spiritualism evolves. Barry has, has produced a, a book, a booklet, actually a small booklet on 21st century principles, the seven principles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you read that, it's quite interesting because he's he's pretty much saying what you're saying and he yeah. gives you the alternatives. And it, it what Simone said about the, the clause at the bottom, that should go back. Yes, definitely. I think so. Back? Who took it out? I, I think the well, union took it out a long time ago because they, uh, to be honest, they there were so many people with so many different views that they decided that they wanted one view, and so that's why they were taken. Was taken. Should go back. We welcome anarchy. You're right. Yes, exactly. You know, go back. Want to be rebels? And, that, and, we're, and, we're religious rebels. That's yeah, what and, we are. and that, uh, whenever I think of because we were actually talking about that before we got online tonight about being rebels. And, and it reminds me, in, in Harry Boddington's University of Spiritualism, under the second principle, he says, the religion of spiritualism plants your feet firmly on every reformer's platform and makes deeds, not creeds, your pathway to heaven. And as you know, that stayed with me because it, it means that it's not about sitting back and thinking, it's about doing something as well, you know? being active and proactive, you know? And that's always, that stayed with me. And that was written a long time ago, a long, long time ago, but it hasn't changed for me. Sorry, Daniel, you were gonna say something. I was simply gonna add on to, uh, appreciate what Tim brought up because of what a discussion is mm -hmm. that uh, it's very important, I feel, just as it was expressed, the way that we learn and practice how to describe spiritualism and how we speak of it, because I see it very often in younger um, groups and communities, the principles aren't what they are seeking. They're seeking something outside of it because as we've all talked about, that constraint of this is what you must be. So for them to be able to conceptualize what does spiritualism mean? And, and one thing I've, I've, it's a simple statement I've practiced when I've spoken to younger groups, is simply that was as a spiritualist, I believe in the interactive relationship with this physical world and the spiritual world. And that manifests mm -hmm. in many different ways. And that seems something that's more uh, tolerated. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel that this is why it's great we're having this discussion because as we progress and generations progress, it is gonna be important how we are able to define what does it mean when I'm a spiritualist and how do I express that to you? Because others are gonna to want to know and, and the way we've been doing it before doesn't seem to still, this is, is no longer working for who is coming behind us. You know, so I really, I, I like that we've done this and I, I appreciate that you both have hosted the opportunity for us to have a discussion on the philosophy around what spiritualism is or even what it's not in order for us to have a better 
kind of yeah. uh, you know a better view of how, or even just a thought, when we walk away this evening, how do I describe who I am, what I am, and how would I explain it to others? That's what we're trying to do, yeah, and think about what we can become, yeah. But you know, I think I think you raise a good point, Daniel. That just the way you described spiritualism there, but to younger group in their language, so they can understand that's so important. But you know. I think we need to think about our audience. So when we are describing spiritualism, so how do you describe that to a young person? You would use words like Daniel was talking about there. Mm -hmm. But you know, if it's maybe a contemporary of yours, maybe actually June's language is what we should be working towards there and thinking about, you know what? There is no hell in damnation. Now to a young person, they won't understand those words because they'll think, well, I never thought there was in the first place. So, you know, that's not an issue to me. But it is, if you're my age and older, because that's how you were taught to believe. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to think about moderating those words and thinking about speaking to the right audience and, as I say, obviously using the, the right explanation. And well, what think, uh, yeah, sorry. interests me is how's that going to evolve? How's that going to change in the future? You know, I, had a, I had an example of that um, a few days ago where um, a woman... A Japanese lady had come to me um, online and asked me for a reading. And I, I said, do you want, do you want translation? And she said, uh, and the, the response I had online was no, no. And she brought her son, a, a, a young boy, who was the translator. And this was a tragic story. It was a, a, a woman whose both her husband and her, her young daughter had taken their own lives. And it was so hard for me, but please, don't, it's not about me at all, but it was hard because I really noticed more than at any other time in all the years I've been involved in spiritualism, how, what a different language we speak to everyday English. And there are, you know, phrases we use that we use all the time. They're not jargon, but they are phrases. It's terminology that we use within spiritualism. And it made me realize how much we're not meeting the needs of the young through our language. And maybe we've got to sort of stand and think about the words we use, the terminology we use to, to bring people in. And, and that was really highlighted to me on Saturday. You know? no, that's really interesting. Mm. I think that's our time as well. Yeah, Perfect time. I think we got there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Anybody, yeah. Does anyone else want to add a, anything at all? Anyone else got anything? No, there? Oh, yeah. Karen. Final say, Karen. Yeah. yeah I, I think I, I, now that I've got the opportunity to say it, I'm not sure that it's a, a, of any importance. But it's it okay. Just, it just struck me that. We have got a logo within spiritualism, uh, mm -hmm. nature, or light. Light, nature, truth. Yeah. And, yeah. Truth. and maybe that's the modern language. Yeah. Yeah. Modern okay. people. Because they, they're all looking at light and what's out in the cosmos and mm. you know, what makes the universe tick. They all seem to be into nature and they're all looking for truth. Exactly. Yeah. Well done. Yep. Thank you for Thank that. I think you're, yeah. you're spot on there. Yeah. Thank you. Can I say something before we finish someone on that oh. subject? Karen's highlighted it to us, I guess. The SNU is running an online event on the 2nd of November. It's the 2nd of November. You'll all certainly, well, all over the world, actually, not just here in the UK, but you'll be aware of COP26, and that's been hosted quite near me here in Scotland, and Scottish Interfaith Week are running a whole series of events that week. And it's, it's basically the first week of COP26. And we felt as spiritualists, we should respond to that. And we should have a voice as spiritualists, the spiritualist community, in saying something about what our response should be to dealing with the environment. So there's going to be a session online. It's the 2nd of November at 7 p.m., go onto the SNU's website and you'll see under the news section. Uh, and saying, please join us to be in Scotland for people all over the world to come in and join us, share in that debate. And 
discussions have been on. Karen's been talking about, let's look at the emblem of spiritualism and really mm -hmm. understand what that nature and how splits should be responding to the concerns we have in the natural world. So if you can join us, that would be great to see you. So, okay. Super. Thank you, John. Our next subject, which is going to be on Tuesday, the 23rd of November, same time, seven o'clock, with hopefully Daniel John. Um, it's gonna, the speech is going to be Living Spiritualism, how we apply it to our daily living. So that's our next subject. Okay. So I look, I'm, uh, no, I look forward to seeing all of you then. And thank you so much for joining us and for participating as well. And wishing you a lovely evening, day, morning, wherever you are. And uh, thanks again. Thank you. Great. Bye bye. See you next month. Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.